Hello and welcome to my channel and if you've been here before welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT and I'm also an adjunct professor at Columbia College in Chicago in the interior architecture program. So shout out to all my Columbia College students and colleagues. Today we're going to look at using the software MakerBot Print and look at some best practices for not only using MakerBot Print but best practices for 3D printing in general. And we want to look at creating 3D prints in the least amount of time using the least amount of material. So let's get right into it. Before we dive in too far I want to remind everyone, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you've subscribed, thank you. Be sure to click on the little bell to get the notifications. Also, thanks for following me on Instagram. And if you haven't followed me, go ahead and follow me. And since today this is going out to my Columbia College students, uh, recently Jeannie Gang, I'm sorry, not Jeannie Gang, I don't know why I said Genie Gang. Genie Gang has another building on the campus, but this time it's Gensler. They just finished the Columbia College Student Center, and it's a it's a great building to have on campus. And I uh, took some photos of it one of the first nights uh, of class. So great building. All right, so let's jump into our tutorial. So MakerBot Print. What is MakerBot Print? MakerBot Print is a software that allows us to set certain types of settings for our 3D print. So it's actually called a slicing software. And the icon for MakerBot Print is this black icon with the M in the middle. All right, so before we jump into MakerBot Print, we have to talk about file preparation and uh, what we need to be able to make are good meshes and I've outlined uh, the word meshes here and I've also outlined naked edges so let's talk a little bit about what that is and what that means okay so here you see some sample geometry now the geometry that we have on the left which are these two objects those are poly surfaces so if I select one of those and I type in the command what it's going to tell me that this is an extrusion surface but it's also telling me um, that well actually in this case it's not telling me that it's a closed poly surface because it's a, a direct extrusion but if I was to if I was to go ahead and explode it and then join it back together and type in the command what I would see that it's a closed solid poly surface with six surfaces so typically you're on the right track. If you can close if you can create a closed solid poly surface, that's typically going to be a good mesh. And let's take a look at this one here. We'll type in the command what. Same thing. Closed solid poly surface with 14 surfaces. So that's usually where you're starting. Whatever software you're working in, you want to create a closed object. A closed poly surface typically is what you would start with. And then by typing in the command mesh we can create a mesh out of that. So if I select one of these and I type in the command what, we're going to see that that is a closed polygon mesh. Now we have to go a little bit further with this and we're going to type in the command check. And when I type in the command check, we're going to see that the mesh does not have any naked edges. So that's what we're looking for when we're, especially when we're using these MakerBot printers. So mesh does not have any naked edges, which means it's closed, which means it's watertight. All the edges are closed, nothing is open, nothing can leak out of it. It is a watertight mesh. Okay, so let's, let's jump into the MakerBot print software. Now you do need to make a, uh, a free account with MakerBot, so you have to sign up for MakerBot, and then you can use this software. This is a free software to download. Now, what we're seeing here is the 3D printer uh, bed size, and it depends on what 3D printer is selected. Now, you don't have to have the 3D printer 
uh, with you or you don't have to be on the network of the 3D printer. And the very lower right of MakerBot Print, you can go ahead and what you can do is you can add a printer and you can add an unconnected printer. So here are all your choices of printers. Now at Columbia College we have we have Replicator 2's, we have the Replicator 2X actually, we have Replicator 5th Gen, we have the Replicator Z18. So you can you can choose ahead of time which one you want to go ahead and set up. I'm going to set up the uh, the 5th Gen. I do want to make a note when I go back to add a printer add an unconnected printer. Um, at Columbia College on the scheduling software you do have access to the 5th gen and you do have access to the Z18. The Replicator 2 is a walk-in so just so you know you can you can walk in and and use those printers and those printers are just fine to use. Okay so you want to set up a printer that you're you're going to work with. Okay alright so now that changes to the size of that printer and you're not opening a project you're actually going to be inserting the file so let's talk about that for a moment insert file what type of file will you be inserting into MakerBot print you wanna import an STL file dot STL stands for stereo photography so let's go back over to Rhino and let's look at how I'm gonna do this so I need to export my mesh file. Now if I use SEL mesh, that's going to select all my meshes in the scene. In this case, there's two of them. I want to export these separately just to demonstrate this. So I'm going to unhighlight that one. Okay, so I've typed in mesh, SEL mesh, and now it's now that mesh is going to be selected. I'll go ahead and select that one again. And I'm going to go to File, Export Selected. So it's only selecting my mesh file. And then it's important that you choose the file type that you're going to export as, which is going to be an STL file. Okay, so you just want to make sure that you export as an STL file. And then you're going to get a pop up window, which is telling you or asking you whether you want binary or ASCII. Binary is fine. Binary is the smaller file size that'll work just well. And we'll click OK. OK, now to bring that file in, you're not opening, you're not going to open a project. You're actually going to insert the file. So we'll click Insert File. And I'm going to bring in, this is actually the cube. So we're going to start by looking at this cube. So here's our cube and MakerBot print. And the first thing I'm going to do is just look at the default settings, meaning how long is it going to take to print this and what does it look like. So I'm going to click on Estimates and Preview. It'll take a few seconds to generate that estimate and preview. Okay, so here we are. We see some things. Let's talk about what we have going on here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to notice is we have this, this off-color orange material at the very bottom. And on the right, it's, it's showing that it's support material. Uh, it's not actually, there's not actually a difference on the, on the MakerBot uh, between s support material and, and model material. There is on their new printer, MakerBot method. But on the older printers, it's just one type of material. It's the way that material is laid down uh, that makes it a support material, the way that it's extruded through the extruder. So basically support material, you can think of it as a material that will break away. Now it's showing that as support material because you can break it away, but it's not actually supporting anything on the model. And we'll get back to that in a little bit. So that's our support material with the orange. Our green is the model material. And then what we're seeing through the x-ray here is we're seeing the support material. Now we can we can raise or lower that. Now what I like to do for my layer range is I like to go over here and I'm going to choose up to layer. So then it's showing me where I'm actually cutting through the object. Okay, so this cube has quite a bit of infill material. So what I mentioned at the beginning of this video is one of my goals is to print 
as quick as possible using the least amount of material. So right now this little cube, uh, it's about two inches by two inches, this cube, is gonna take three hours and 10 minutes. Let's see if we can reduce that. And it's also gonna use about 34.5 grams of material. So let's see if we can reduce the 34.5 grams and the three hour, 10 minute time. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? All right, so to make this window go away, I'm just gonna click back on estimates and preview. I'm gonna go back down to print settings. Okay, before I get there, another thing you wanna check is here under the, the model info, under the I. If you, let me select the model first. This file I made in millimeters. A lot of people work in inches. So you have to match this to the file units that you use to create your model. If you made your model in millimeters, then this can stay millimeters. If you made your model in inches, then this should be inches. So you'll know right away, if you made a model in inches and you bring it into the MakerBot print software, it's gonna be really tiny. And then you're just gonna to wanna to come here to the model info and change that to inches. Okay, under print settings, we're gonna go down and click on custom settings. And we're gonna go in and use the quick settings. Okay, so the raft is turned on and I've always printed with MakerBot using a raft, which is what holds the 3D print down to the print bed. That's what we saw in the off color orange material. Now the layer height, okay? So the smaller the layer height, the, the finer the print is gonna print, the better it's gonna look. But we don't always need ultra fine print quality or ultra high print quality. So I'm gonna suggest when you're first making your prints, to use a 0.3 millimeter height. Okay, and make sure that when you enter in point, point 0.3, enter, it updates, okay? The default was 0.2. If you want something really fine, you could use 0.1. But I'm, in, I'm gonna suggest that you start with 0.3 millimeter height. Okay, let's go down to the infill. Now, MakerBot Print has a fairly low infill starting point, 10%. I've seen it much higher uh, in other types of software as a default. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and just cut that in, in, uh, in half. I'm gonna bring that down to 5%. Okay, so for right now we've just adjusted those two things, layer height and infill. And we're gonna go ahead and click done. And I'm gonna make this go away by clicking on the print settings and then I'm gonna go back to the estimates and preview. Give that a couple seconds to update. Okay. So we have used quite a bit less material now. We went from 34.5 grams down to 27.6 roughly. And here's where we really saved a lot. We went from three hours and 10 minutes and we're down to one hour, 42 minutes. So we're saving a lot of time there. Okay, the next thing that I wanna look at is printing an object that is going to require support material. Okay, so these two objects here, they're gonna require support because while the 3D printer is printing, something is gonna to have to hold up these areas. Okay, and just to talk about that just a little bit more. So these, these cubes here did not need support material because there's no overhanging objects. There's, everything is stacked right on top of another as it prints, so no support material. If I was to take uh, and, and and let's say extrude this surface here. If I was to extrude that surface, bring it out. Still, I don't need support material because it goes from the base to the top. But if I was to take that and, and manipulate it a little bit, just turning on, the, on its solid points and then picking those up off the base plane, now this model would require support to hold this area up. It can't, the, the 3D printer just can't print uh, with things floating in the air, they'll just drop down. Okay, so let's look at bringing in this object into MakerBot Print because it needs support and look at support material. So we're making our way to our, our final topic here. Okay, so I'm just gonna, to clear this out, I'm gonna say File, New Project, 
and I will confirm uh, because I didn't save it and I will go to file insert file and bring in my file that needs support okay so let's let's look at let's just look at the default estimates and preview okay so by default the support material is not turned on we're not seeing the orange material infill these areas so this wouldn't it wouldn't print correctly I mean, you could try it some 3d printers can span small areas but in this case that's big enough area where I'm gonna need some support so we'll actually be adding some time right now the time estimate is an hour 56 and it's only using 29.98 grams but we're gonna end up using more material because we need more support and the time is gonna go up a little bit so let's look at this I'm gonna close that window and we'll go into our print settings custom settings go to quick settings okay so it still remembers my settings from last time 0.3 millimeter layer height and a 5% infill now I need to turn the support material on that's very important which was not on by default so I'm gonna go over to supports and bridging and at the very top I'm gonna to click on support this could be located at the very bottom I've seen this in different locations within the MakerBot print software but I'm turning on support and I'm clicking done and I'll close this print settings and I will go over to estimates and preview again give that a second to update okay so now you are seeing that support material okay and let's let's make a cut through this so I'll change my layer range to up to layer so as I'm cutting through you're seeing this orange material now that's printing so that it can hold up when it gets up to whatever layer that is where it starts to come across and fill that gap right about there we're seeing that that's being held up with the orange support material so as I mentioned it was going to take a little bit longer and use a little bit more material okay so what's what's the final step once you have your your slicer once you've sliced this and prepared it to print you're gonna to go to file and you're gonna to go to save project and you're saving this as a MakerBot project which has a dot print extension and then that's something that you can put on a USB drive and and put that USB drive directly into your printer okay so that's using MakerBot print in a nutshell have fun 3d printing and I'll see you next time